Go ahead and get started once I can start my clock. There we go. Cool. Um, the name of this presentation is Cloud Native My Camel from low code to pro code, inject serverless and cloud native goodness into your app dev with Apache Camel 3. So if you didn't get from that, we're going to be talking about app dev. We're going to be talking about some cloud native app dev. If that's not really your bag, um, the, re the next 30, 40 minutes is going to be a little boring. So um, now's your chance. All right. Cool. Well, I'm glad you guys decided to stick around. Uh, my name is Mike Coslo. I'm a programmer. I've been doing this 20 some odd years, uh, mostly in the enterprise Java space. I'm a distributed software lover. Um, uh, enterprise integration patterns are kind of my thing. That's one of the things we're going to talk about um, in this presentation. I'm a, I play a little bit of soccer. Um, as you guys can tell, I haven't been playing a lot lately, but uh, I should be getting back to it now that we've kind of come out of the pandemic a little bit. I'm an Austinite. I've been here for about 25 years. A little bit of change in the city since. Um, also worth noting, I'm, uh, I work at Red Hat. Um, I've been there for most of the last decade, about nine years so far. And I have a blog. If you guys uh, care to check out uh, my opinions on other things, um, you can check it out at entropic.me. The slide deck should be up on the uh, session, too. So um, yeah, 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 no need to uh, frantically type. Cool. So let's talk about what our agenda is going to be. One of the first things we want to uh, talk about is whether or not the, this buzzword we keep hearing, cloud native, is that just um, uh, architecture, right? Is that marketing speak, or is that a new architectural construct? Is that something we need to pay, pay attention to? One of the things we'll talk about is what is low code? We'll give ourselves a definition so we can actually uh, go on and figure out why Apache Camel is really good for this. Um, what's pro code, right? Um, what is Apache Camel? for instance, right? Um, we probably want to level set ourselves a little bit. We'll talk about how Apache Camel is an idiom idiomatic DSL for enterprise integration patterns. Um, and then we're going to talk about a bunch of new stuff in Apache Camel 3. It's a new major version. There are about 17 minor versions in thus far. So it's a little longer in the tooth than you might expect if you haven't um, heard of all the change there. But there's some super cool stuff. So we're going to discuss um, our uh, some low-code constructs. We're also going to discuss an IPaaS which is an accompaniment to um, these new changes in Camel 3. Um, and there's many, 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 many more components, adapters, so on and so forth, um, uh, that are new in Camel 3 that weren't sitting there in Camel 2. So we won't take a long look at that, but we, uh, we will take a, a little peek. We're going to demo along the way. Um, we're going to live demo. So uh, I've made that big mistake. We'll see how it goes. And um, uh, I think we'll have time for a Q&A. So real quick, uh, what is cloud native? Some guy took uh, um, uh, a very, very verbose attempt at defining what uh, cloud native means and what it means in our app dev space. Um, too long didn't read. The basic premise is this. Um, if we're just native to a single cloud, we are not cloud native. For instance, if I take some proprietary cloud service um, in cloud A and I try to go run it in cloud B, I have problems. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that uh, I've been working with teams and uh, they've spent a laborious amount of effort, time, and money in um, erecting a cloud. Their executive management is a uh, police upon trait. And um, they're like, OK, cool. So let's go to the next cloud. Well, naturally, the, the conversation that follows that isn't very pretty. Um, once they learn that that's going to take a minimum 9, 12 months, uh, likely much longer. Um, it's not just microservices. One of the things we'll see in cloud native um, architecture discussions is thou shalt microservice. And I'm not saying thou shalt should not uh, microservice by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, you probably should. But that in and of itself is not enough to be cloud native. Um, ultimately, um, uh, this fellow who uh, decides to um, uh, who define cloud native there it um, uh, boils us down and distills us to a set of characteristics. We have to be elastic. We have to have on-demand scaling. We have to be re resilient. And let's not just think about resiliency in terms of, oh, I have a replication controller, um, and bang, my guy pops back up, right? Um, we need some more caring and feeding than that. Um, we need to be manageable and observable. We need to be location agnostic, right? Um, we need to be event-driven, and we need to be API-centric. Cool. What is low-code? <clears throat> Pardon me. 
So a um, bunch of definitions out there. I just took two of the biggies. Uh, foresters, like a gardener type research company, I'm sure you guys are all aware. Um, and they had something, uh, they have a definition that says, hey, there needs to be minimal hand coding. I think we can, uh, we all kind of uh, um, uh, parse that out of the term low code. But um, uh, quick setup and deployment is actually part of this definition. What that really means is we need to have some sort of paths of some sort. We can't expect somebody to go through all the machinations that, they might, that it might normally take them to go write deployment descriptors or deployment YAML or yada, yada, yada to integrate not just with the platform but the surrounding things that they may want to integrate within the platform. IBM. Um, uh, goes a little bit farther. They say it's got to be a visual approach. Okay, that makes sense, right? Your kind of no-code, low-code stuff normally comes with some sort of something to view. Um, but they said something that I also thought was um, uh, quite interesting, and that is low-code development platforms um, also aid more seasoned programmers. And we're going to take a peek at what that might actually mean when we start getting into the Camel 3 stuff. Cool. So what is ProCode? This is actually a picture I took yesterday. It's of uh, Linus Torvalds. You can kind of see him in the background there. But um, uh, one of the things he described is their makefile was a makefile in name only. It's got incredible complexity to it and whatnot. So pro code isn't really a thing. In fact, it's probably pretty insulting to a lot of people in our industry. We're basically saying, I'm pro and you're not, right? That's not really that cool. However, what we're really trying to say here is, kind of like Linus was saying yesterday, is that when uh, what we refer to as pro code is um, uh, much more complexity, some sophistication to not just the logical factoring, but likely ancillary assets that go along, it, uh, along with it. For instance, I may have some complexity in a CI-CD pipeline. I may have artifacts like a K-native service, um, uh, Istio. Um, artifact, a uh, bunch of different YAML type things. This is when we start to get out of our low code and kind of into the, you have to be a pretty gosh darn good software engineer to be able to um, uh, wrangle with the uh, code base in front of you. All right, cool. So I kind of sped through that. Uh, you guys will see why I'm going so fast in a second. But um, uh, so I think we have to ask ourselves, um, just so we level set, what is Apache Camel? Right, um, kind of why we're here. It's initially released in 2007, so this is something that's been around with us for 15 years. It's actually quite mature, and you'll see it at organizations all over the world. Um, some very, very important ones. Um, it's a versatile open source integration framework based on known enterprise integration patterns. And some enterprise integration patterns that you might think about is, let's say I get a piece of XML and I want to split the nodes of XML. Or if I, uh, I get a little piece of, um, uh, a payload, some JSON comes to me and I say, hey, there's a piece of that JSON that lets me know I need to go over here, and in other cases, I want to go over there. We'll actually look at uh, that, uh, something like that in a second. Apache Camel is idiomatic, and what I mean by that is we have these phrases from, to, enrich, transform, um, as I mentioned, split, route, so on and so forth. And there's a bunch of stuff happening underneath the covers in Apache Camel, but programmatically, what I factor is these idiomatic expressions. I don't necessarily need to uh, know the entirety of how one might communicate with, say, a message broker. I just need to say, hey, from this message broker and use a Camel component, which will take some of the complexity out of the way for me. Um, there's hundreds of these components that I just mentioned. Um, these work as kind of adapters to commonly use enterprise software components. Uh, SAP, Salesforce, so on and so forth, right? Um, uh, we, uh, you've got adapters or uh, um, components for that. But um, you also have your traditional kind of, I need to get to a database, I need to get to Mongo, Postgres, and um, let's say I want to do some cool stuff with XML, transformation, stuff like that. That's all there. Um, the library actually gets leveraged in a bunch of different JVM runtimes. Um, we may have seen each ourselves off in OSGI land with Carafe 10 years ago. Um, a more modern, uh, more, uh, in a more modern sense, um, uh, you might have even seen yourself uh, on enterprise Java platforms, um, Open Liberty, uh, JBoss, right? But in, uh, uh, nowadays, you probably see yourself more likely to be in a Spring Boot or something like a Quarkus. And so here, um, uh, this is from the Apache Camel website. 
And um, this gives us a little bit more of a feel for um, what Apache Camel is. Here we'll notice there in the middle, this is actual Java um, uh, uh, that might constitute what we call the Camel DSL. Notice we consume from our file component. Um, there's going to be a bunch of uh, files in uh, something called C adder. Um, uh, we're going to filter based on an XPath expression. And then at the end of the day, we want those things that we filtered and met our XPath expression, those are going to go off to some sort of queue. You'll notice um, uh, on the right hand side, we have things like processors. We want to handle EIPs. So like I said, um, things like uh, um, split, um, uh, content based routing, these sorts of things. Um, and at the bottom there, again, we see this reference to a ton of different components, right? Um, at the end of the day, we have hundreds of components to choose from. Cool. So what's new in Apache Camel 3? So um, Klaus Ibsen, who's a super cool guy, uh, check him out online if you get a chance. He's one of the leaders of the Apache Camel 3 project, or of the Apache Camel project. And he's put together a quick, concise list. It's too long for us to really discuss. There's a lot going on that's new in Apache Camel 3. We're going to focus on a few things that kind of lend itself to our kind of low-code constructs that we're after. So um, uh, some of these uh, new things are there's a YAML DSL. In the past, we had an XML DSL. We had a Java DSL. Um, uh, many of us kind of always stayed in the Java DSL. Now we have a bunch of DSLs, um, but more specifically, we're going to focus on the YAML DSL um, and something called Camelots. So that last integration, little snippet of an, an integration I showed you, the idea behind a Camelot is it's a building block. So instead of having, I could go write that, and let's say one of my colleagues wanted to share um, the particular integration, instead of them having some control C, control V fun, right, um, they can actually go reuse that building block by just passing in um, something uh, very simple. We're actually going to take a look, uh, a long look at that in a second. Um, there's a declarative iPass that we talked about. Um, uh, the idea behind CamelK, you may have guessed the K part, is to exploit Kubernetes um, and to exploit the platform. So um, there's out of the box, there's out of the box integration with a platform. This could be serverless. Um, this could be uh, Istio, uh, i.e., your service mesh. This could be other things like the Open API spec that we may want to um, kind of seamlessly integrate. Um, Jaeger, Open Tracing, uh, Prometheus, so on and so forth. We may have needs to just kind of plug in there without necessarily wanting to instrument everything that goes along with that. And that's kind of where Camel K comes in. It also um, uh, has um, something that we call a Camel catalog. And these are, again, an extensible set of building blocks that we can use so that if I'm a low-code guy and I don't necessarily know how to um, factor some really, really complex code, I can just say, hey, um, uh, pro code, part of the house. Um, Miss, do you mind uh, making me uh, um, uh, some, uh, some cool camel? And I'll just use it without necessarily having to know what's really going on and um, uh, having to write a bunch of code. Um, and then, again, the pro code enhancements. Um, some of these things are pretty cool. There's faster start and runtime, so we'll see that due to modular decomposition. We've got Quarkus extensions with an eye towards native compilation. That means we can get deployment times um, and performance that is order of magnitude, orders of magnitude faster than we might, may have been in the past. A type safe DSL, um, uh, that's a biggie of mine. Um, that was always a problem in Camel 2, especially as we collaborated with our uh, um, colleagues and a ton more. Camel K um, is, again, an iPaaS. And um, let's level set on what I mean by exploiting Kubernetes. Um, if Everybody knows what an operator is. An operator is something that kind of cares and feeds for a deployment. And generally speaking, what uh, operators do in Kubernetes is they'll expose an API. And if I use that API, I can tell the operator, hey, I want you to care, uh, care and feed for my deployment in this way. I want you to configure it uh, as such. An example of an operator might be the StreamZ project, where I say, hey, I want you to go launch a Kafka cluster and I want you to give it the following characteristics. It'll go care and the operator will then say, hey, you know, there's things you need to do along your lifetime. You need to rebalance, stuff like that. So these are the types of things that an operator does. We describe our integrations um, uh, just like the code that we saw previously. We describe those integrations as YAML um, based on this API. And um, what CamelK will do is actually looks at the YAML, Java, or anything else we're throwing at it 
um, and an integration and determines via heuristics what you actually need in uh, your um, integration. What I mean by that is it'll say, oh, hey, you're using the following components. That means I need to go grab the following dependencies. We need to make a build, and I need to package up the build accordingly. And it'll actually ship that out. Uh, it has a build system, and it ships that um, out into the image registry um, uh, of your Kubernetes distro, et voila, bang, um, uh, it'll then deploy it for you. So again, meeting those kinds of low code, uh, that original low code definition, where we had to have quick setup and deployment, right? I don't, as we'll see later, I don't actually need to know anything about Kubernetes to get one of these, uh, to get um, integrations running and building, uh, building, running, and uh, deployed into Kubernetes um, because of CamelK. Um, it uses a camel catalog and a camelette catalog. So a camel catalog for the components and a camelette ca catalog that uh, uh, gives us these um, uh, building blocks. Um, and this allows us to ensure some governance, right? So now, instead of having one team who's building camel.221 and this, uh, uh, another gang, uh, the other team, um, they want to use Camel 217, and somebody else wants to use Camel 3.4, and somebody else wants to be on Quarkus, somebody else wants to be on Spring Boot, so on and so forth. We now have a consistent dependency chain that's instrumented by Camel K, and we can maintain governance across that. Again, I'm not asking developers to go put together all of this. I'm saying, hey, just give me the business features that you wish to express in your Java or YAML, what have you, et voila, bang, I'm going to go do the rest for you. Um, and it deploys an integration with a set of characteristics, right? Should it join a service mesh, for instance? So let's take a peek real quick. This is an example of an integration custom resource. Um, and uh, let's go over to a place where we can look at this a little bit better. Cool. Hopefully, everybody can see this. Um, we're, in, uh, we're in VS Code. Um, uh, if you don't see VS Code um, uh, for some reason uh, out there on the interwebs, something's gone wrong. Um, so what we're looking at here is one of these APIs. And what you'll see here is, again, we have that integration um, uh, type rate, uh, kind. You see the um, API version name. We gave it a name. And then, um, as we talked about previously, the Camel DSL is idiomatic, and this is it in YAML, right? We have um, a REST configuration. We probably want to put something like that together. We have, uh, we're going to answer on localhost at um, uh, 8081. We're going to, um, uh, we've got a REST uh, operation, right? Place order, it's a post. We have something called a route. You'll notice this says, hey, go over um, to this direct order coffee guy. Um, and uh, naturally, um, uh, if you're a low code person, you probably need a little bit of training for this to be meaningful, but i.e. I, you need to know what direct means, right? But as you can see, we consume from that um, uh, order coffee. Um, endpoint. And then we have a set of um, things that we do, again, that are idiomatic. I won't bore you guys with this because um, I'm uh, running a little short on time. However, we have a set of conditionality that we go through. We take, uh, we do some, we have our log component there. Um, we, uh, we go out uh, to a camlet. Um, and this camlet doesn't necessarily, uh, this particular camlet only takes in an URL, right? Um, it's going to obfuscate everything about the HTTP interaction to you. Our HTTP component, however, needs more stuff, right? Um, however, the camlet will go ahead and do that. So it's going to go out to an URL and get a random coffee. We've got some more conditional expressions. We've got the JSON path component. Um, we're going to uh, um, uh, select some items, so on and so forth. And inevitably, you know, we may not have met our conditions. We also have another route here. Um, and what I didn't point out is that one of those steps earlier um, sends something to uh, this particular route. This route, again, uses a camlet, right? Um, there's a lot of configuration that I might want to do with um, uh, going out to something like uh, a JMS broker. This attempts to obfuscate some of that. And there's only a few different things I can choose here, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going uh, to go to localhost, um, what have you. <coughs> and that's it. So that's um, what, con but this is uh, that YAML there, that Camel DSL is all wrapped up in this integration object, which my Camel K operator can now, if I was to go throw this at my Camel K operator, it's going to go try to build that. It's going to go try to make a an image out of it, and then it's going to try to comp uh, um, deploy it. Cool. 
So you're probably thinking to yourself, all right, so the IBM uh, definition um, included a big, 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 big thing. It's got to be visual, right? And um, as you guys saw, um, I kind of needed to know what I was doing there in that last uh, one. I ha had to have a pretty good feel for the um, uh, Camel uh, DSL, um, even though it was in YAML and maybe a little bit easier to use. I don't have to worry about what Java version I'm on and yada, yada, yada. Is Maven going, do I have the right Maven plugins? Even though I didn't have to worry about all of that, there's still some complexity and I still had to do some uh, coding. So um, uh, uh, one of the great things about the introduction of the YAML DSL is we have a new generation of GUIs that are actually taking on this premise. Um, one of the things we're going to take a peek at is Caravan. So we're going to go back into VS Code in a second, and we're going to look at Caravan. It's an official Apache project. So um, uh, it's not just some uh, Frankenstein thing that's bolted onto the side of Apache Camel. This is part of the actual community distribution. Um, we all, there's also something cool called Camel JBang. What one of the things that's always been problematic about running these snippets of Camel is, well, I need to go get myself a runtime. That runtime has specifics, right? I need to know how to use Spring Boot, or I need to know how to use, use OSGI in the past, or I need to know how to use uh, JBoss. What actually, how do I actually distribute uh, Camel into an ear, or how do I uh, distribute it into an OSGI bundle, right? I can't, uh, uh, back in the old craft days, you know, going back seven or eight years ago when that was quite hot, can't tell you the number of times I spent in an OSGI manifest, and that was the bulk of our discussion um, uh, when trying to deliver code, right? Camel JBang is something that um, will uh, go cons look at your piece of Camel, doesn't matter whether it's in YAML, Java, so on and so forth, will instrument a runtime for it, get everything it needs, and then Camel now in Camel 3 has a Camel main, and bang, will Camel main you, et voila, you're up and running. So let's take a peek. Cool. And so this is the route that we were just looking uh, at the um, YAML for, as expressed here in um, the, uh, as expressed here in Caravan. As you can notice, we have our conditional behavior that we saw before that's drawn in a certain way. Um, uh, everything that we just had. Uh, everything that we just kind of quickly stepped through is there. We have also, um, uh, as we saw previously, we have a REST configuration. To give ourselves a better look at this, Let's go ahead and create one of these. So um, I'm going to say get coffee. I'm going to say direct. And I don't have anything to send this to. So um, I'm going to go actually create this here. Cool. And you'll notice um, we now have an additional route over here. We'll go over to that in a second. Um, we don't consume anything because we're I, uh, um, a get, of course. Um, and then I think that should be good. Yeah, cool. So let's go over here to this route, our new route that we just created, get OSS and a coffee, right? And um, I've got uh, this direct thing that I, we just said, hey, go create that. Now, I'm, we don't have, we have less time than I would like us to have. So we're just going to do a quick set body. We're going to say, hey, um, test me. Cool. That's good. Let's real quick look at, at some other things that are available. We, of course, have all our Camel components, right? Um, you can see things like ActiveMQ, AMQP. And we also have these um, things called Camelets. Again, this attempts to simplify these things. So you guys will notice um, uh, many, many more things here than we had in the past. Tons of AWS stuff. For instance, the AWS Kinesis Firehose Sync, so on and so forth, and AWS Lambda Sync. None of these things existed back in Camel 2 days. But we won't worry about that for the time being, because we're interested in something called Camel JBag. So I'm going to press that little start thing. There's a small issue with my guy that I um, am running right now. So sorry about that. But We'll go ahead and um, you'll notice what Camel JBang is actually doing here is um, you should see some dependencies downloaded. It started up Apache Camel. We started our routes. Um, you'll notice that I have HTTP endpoints that are answering, so on and so forth. You'll notice I didn't just use a POM. There's no Java jar that I just issued. None of that happened. This is all Camel JBang instrumenting this for quick prototyping. So we'll go over here. Um, Sorry, we'll go over here <laughs> and whoop, just so we know that there's nothing up our sleeve, 
Uh, we'll go down here to get coffee. Cool, and we just put in test me, right? So um, uh, obviously it gets phenomenally more complex than that, and we would like to add some more complexity, but it's just that easy for a, a developer to be able to go write some code in, in a GUI, test the code without necessarily really knowing what is happening in the surrounding universe around them with Camel JBang. Um, and is able to do this exclusively with GUI, uh, with a GUI, they could of course also come down into the YAML DSL themselves. Sweet. So what is a Camlet? I keep referencing these things and I keep calling them pre-built integrations. And um, we just saw this picture, right? Um, uh, there's a ton of them. We've got a few hundred that are available right now via the community. These are all built on the YAML DSL. And currently, the, as I mentioned, we have hundreds of these. We have a cut, we, but we can also add our own custom Camlets. What that means is I likely have a couple of different personas on my engineering team. So I likely have a, some, uh, some people who are uh, great. They sling code all day long. They're very, very interested in some of the kind of pro code stuff we'll talk about in a second. And I also have some people who are likely less seasoned, right? Um, and they can take on some of these low code concepts and say, hey, um, uh, pro code side of the house, if you guys can extend a set of camlets, these pre-built integrations, when things get really, really hard for me, I can still actually contribute and deliver code, right? Because I can reuse your camlets. Um, yeah, so let's go take a peek uh, at um, what that means. Cool. So um, here is, uh, you guys will notice I changed editors. Um, for extra credit, I'll let you guys uh, guess which, which one I prefer. Um, but here we are um, in uh, Eclipse, and um, we have, again, a Camlet. We'll notice um, there's nothing crazy going on here. I have a little bit of metadata, right? You know, that I'm saying, hey, uh, you know, title, description. I have some properties. Um, uh, I let people, uh, or I let uh, everybody else know what's going to come out of my Camlet. In this case, I have a cam um, in this case, I have a Camlet source. We have a source and sync dichotomy with Camlets. Some are sources, some are syncs, right? I can, with a Camlet uh, binding, I can um, put these two things together um, uh, quite quickly. So in this case, again, you'll notice here's the Camel DSL. And we're again in YAML. So um, just real quick, I have a timer, I tick every so often, and I'm gonna go off to our random coffee uh, API, and then I'm gonna lay that off to whatever the sync is. That sync could be that JMS uh, um, broker sync, it could be your sales, it could be a Salesforce sync, it could be any number of different things. Let's go take a look at, um, in our case, what our sync is gonna be. Cool, so um, uh, I've got the medium code camel sync here. And this is very much um, uh, um, uh, going to uh, take in um, whatever it got, uh, whatever you're trying to lay off to the sink, right? Um, it's got a few of its own properties. It lets people uh, lets people know what it's going to, um, uh, uh, what will actually come out of the sink. And oh, by the by, um, uh, it's consuming from a Camlet source. Here's Camel, the Camel DSL again. We're in YAML now. There's a bunch of different ways I could use this. I could do something like a, a Camlet binding where I can say sync, a source sync, right? So I could say, hey, give me the uh, old school JMS broker source and then uh, give me the uh, Kafka sync because I need to move some data around. Or give me the database source, give me the Kafka sync because I wanted to do um, uh, something that uh, approaches CDC. In our case, we're actually um, going to do something a little bit different. And this is um, one of the things that I think is very cool here. I can use this in Java as well. Just because this YAML DSL, ex uh, just because this DSL exists in YAML form there, I can reuse this as long as the Camlet exists in my Camlet catalog. What this means is if I'm a developer and I want to sling some integrations around via um, my Camel K iPads, um, and there's some complexity that somebody else has already solved, I can just reuse that. I don't need to go reinvent uh, the wheel again at all. And what we'll notice here is this is Java-based, um, and we're going to go uh, uh, throw this into Camel K. 
Um, uh, we're going to consume from uh, that Hamlet source, right? Um, we pass it in uh, a property. So if you'll remember, one of its properties is this a timer. It's going to tick so often. We're going to tick every, uh, I think, few seconds. Um, we, have, uh, we may want to do some things in a processor, so on and so forth. Inevitably, we end up at our Camlet sync. Right? We, again, we pass in a property. And that is what can uh, compose, I'm, uh, that composes the integration. And I'm able to use, as we mentioned, these building blocks in a more, if you will, uh, pro code or traditional um, app dev setting. So let's um, uh, go off to my cheat sheet. Um, let's grab something from here. And let's go run this. All right. So, um, oops. Cool. So I'm using um, I'm using uh, OpenShift. You don't have to use OpenShift. You can use any Kubernetes uh, distro. That's relatively uh, recent. Um, again, I'm using OpenShift, but don't worry about that. Um, let's go ahead and whoop, execute the camel with a K CLI. What you guys will notice here um, uh, is I'm using something called camel with a K. This is a camel CLI. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, ship that uh, integration, if you will, up to um, our, uh, our camel K operator. Now, you might say to yourself, hey, Mike, you only shipped Java there. That was just a piece of Java. There wasn't that integration custom resource that we just looked at. What this is actually going to do, we're ju we just did an OYAML on the command that we just created. What this is actually going to do is it's going to create, sorry, we'll go all the way up to the top, that, um, boo -boo -boo. Yeah, this is going to create that integration resource, right? And so here we notice the code that we just shipped, um, the container. We gave it a few um, uh, uh, traits, if you will. Um, here's the dependencies that, uh, based on the heuristics um, that it ran over my code that it indicates that I actually need. It's going to go in the build. It's going to go package all of those um, dependencies, go grab them from a Maven repo, literally do a Maven build, et voila. We're going to ship that off. Now, let's see if that worked. Cool, it looks like it did. Um, real quick, let's take a look at the camlets that are available. These are the list of camlets that are available in uh, Camel K. And we'll notice there's our medium code camel source and camel sync. If we go to We'll see we're working away, we're ticking away, we're sending messages, we're going out um, and hitting this random API. That's all going a little fast, but inevitably, we got um, some uh, astringent, creamy, peanut, green grape, licorice um, uh, type coffee, and it apparently is from Mexico. Cool. So that is two camlets working together in a Java-based integration that we just shipped to Camel K, et voila, bang, it made a build, it deployed. Now. Let's go a little further and uh, running out of time. Sorry about that. So one of the cool things about um, uh, Camel K um, that we mentioned is it's exploiting the Kubernetes platform. And I have the availability via something called Camel K traits to tell the Camel K operator which of these capabilities to plug into. So I can say, hey, go plug into um, uh, serverless. Go plug into Prometheus. Go plug into a service mesh. And shameless self-promotion, if one was interested in how one might do some of this stuff with a service mesh and uh, how these things plug in, play together, and maybe even some opinions on uh, how to do that. There's a little linkage for um, somebody's presentation at KubeCon called Governing the Cloud Native Event Mesh. Cool. So um, uh, let's go do that. We're going to go back to Eclipse. Um, I've got two things that I'm going to throw up there. I've got this first guy. This guy is called Event Bus Transformation Integration. And what this guy does is consume from, you'll see, um, a Knative component. Knative in, uh, is the serverless path that we've chosen here. You could also um, get some serverless kind of uh, goodness with uh, Kata. But um, uh, up to you, I quite like uh, Knative. And instead of this just being Knative serving, it's actually going to um, uh, be listening to Knative channels. So we're going to do the Knative eventing stuff. 
And it's going to pick up a message from a channel called testing DB events, much like it would a message broker. And then it's going to do some stuff and it's going to lay off um, to, uh, to that guy as well. What's, we're also going to ship this guy event sync integration. And what this is, is just a timer. It's going to repeat 50 times. And it's going to send, uh, it's not going to do a whole lot. It's just going to say, hey, uh, open source uh, summit, welcome to cloud native integration. Then it's going to lay off to one of these Knative channels as well. Cool. So let's go back over here. Oop. No need to do that. And we'll go back to our cheat sheet. Um, and you guys won't be su too surprised to find out that I have um, already built some of this stuff here. So we're going to be a little bit faster than we might otherwise be. Cool. So actually, let's do this. Uh, we're over time. But um, the main thing here is you'll see previously we hadn't, um, uh, we didn't have an event bus transformation integration running. Bang. The second we start pumping messages into the uh, serverless event bus, um, it picks up and scales from zero to one. What we'll, what's most noticeable about that, if we go back to um, whoop, this guy, is we gave this a set of traits. Um, we gave it, oops, let's go one more. Um, we'll go to this guy here. And this is what we just told, uh, what, what I told uh, Camel K earlier to do. And one of the things we'll notice is we have a trade Knative service enabled. We actually made a Knative service without having to actually go um, throw any YAML in there with it. Um, we also um, just said Knative is enabled in general. So if we go to do. So inevitably, what we'll see is um, uh, this uh, our uh, event bus transformation integration is going to scale um, back down to zero. This should take um, about 30 seconds to a minute. In the meantime, I'm going to show you guys. Um, there we go. And as you can see now, it's starting to scale back down to zero. This will sit at zero until, again, it's woken up. So um, uh, we have a, we're kind of in our Q&A time. We did have a little bit more that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm going to uh, show you real quick a native compilation because I can show that off real quick, um, what that implies. Um, however, I think the most important part that I want to leave you guys with is this. And then I'll uh, shut up and if anybody has any questions, they can ask them. Um, uh, many of our low-code, no-code appliances over the years have been bolt-on appendages to our enterprise stack. Um, they're over off here in left field. Um, and nobody wants to touch them in the organization. It's really, really, really unpleasant, right? Um, this presents a path where the, your more seasoned engineers, um, as well as your less seasoned engineers, are able to use the same bits. Everything that we just saw in CamelK that it produced is going to be doing the exact, is going to be using the same dependencies, it's going to be using the same runtimes, um, most likely, so on and so forth that we might see in a more pro-code scenario. And so um, because I promised I would do so, let's do this. Um, these take a little bit to build, but um, that is how quickly um, our, uh, uh, our uh, we just started up. Actually, let's do this real quick. That didn't start up. Cool. We started in 0.19 seconds. Anybody who's uh, been in the enterprise Java space for a while, I'm working with a team right now that has um, a uh, deployment that takes about eight hours for their application to uh, deploy, you'll notice that this just deployed in 19 milliseconds. 
that is uh, incredibly uh, short. Anytime we're doing serverless work um, where we need to answer pretty quickly, uh, we need to go from zero to one well within our 30 second timeout, right? So on and so forth. This kind of pro code technique um, becomes quite handy. So, all right, I'm gonna stop there. I had more stuff I wanna discuss, but I've left everybody with one minute for Q&A. So, uh, my apologies. But um, uh, if you guys wanna grab me in the hall, so on and so forth, um, I love to chat about this stuff. I could probably spend the rest of the year chatting with you guys about this stuff. Yeah. So, I use Yeah. Yeah, categorically. So one of the things we just saw there was Camel JBang. Camel JBang went ahead and instrumented um, without using Spring Boot. There is a Camel main, right, now in Apache Camel 3. So you, you could just Java jar into your Camel main, a well up, bang, right? Um, you're good to go. Scala, I haven't spent a ton of time with over the last 10 years or so. So I don't know how well the hooks are going to work. Um, I would assume, though, you should be able to uh, load, load uh, you should be able to invoke a camel main from Scala that's sitting in your JVM. But again, I, I, I would definitely check my math on that. All right. All right, gang, well, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm at my time. Like I said, you guys are free to grab me in the hall. Um, I don't want to keep you guys from your lunch, of course. That would be horrible of me. But um, yeah, um, we're over time. Uh, I think nobody's rushing to get in here. So um, uh, if you guys want to keep chatting, I'm free to. Um, if you don't, I'm sure you have better things to do. But um, anyways, guys, thanks very much. And um, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference.